Good morning and welcome to Trinity Episcopal Church in beautiful Bloomington, Indiana. This is the first Sunday after the Epiphany and the feast of the baptism of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please stick around after the service for a few announcements and in the meantime please enjoy the prelude and opening hymn.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29. Let us read responsively by half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe, Ascribe to the Lord, Lord glory and strength. and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship, Worship the, the Lord in the, the beauty, beauty of holiness. Of the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God, God of glory, glory thunders. thunders. 
The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall, shall give his people the blessing of peace. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus. When he found there uh, some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptizes with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him. That is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. And together there were about 12 of them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Please be seated. In the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California, there is a kelp forest. It's a giant tank of seawater, 28 feet tall, and it holds multiple living strands of giant kelp, along with hundreds of fish of different species. You can view it through these massive windows on the inside of the aquarium that allow you to see it from bottom to top. Now, kelp is hard to keep alive in an aquarium. Kelp actually needs waves and pulses of water in the ocean to move nutrients to it and to keep the leaves that are floating on the top of the water damp. They need to be splashed and pushed with the waves. Essentially, kelp cannot live in calm water. Kelp needs chaotic water. When I saw this exhibit, I was fascinated. They actually have artificial waves that they pulse into the tank and make the top splash and churn. And with every simulated wave or, or real wave that had been made in the tank, the fish in the tank would just be kind of placidly floating along, but they'd bob way up and they'd bob way down. They'd just keep rising and falling without changing their expression, barely moving at all. And the kelp remained anchored while swaying and bending. Despite the chaotic flow of the water, the kelp and the fish were content to move with the chaos, to live in the chaos. Be the kelp. Be the fish. On Epiphany, we witnessed terrible chaos, violent chaos, treasonous chaos. Our nation's capital was invaded by violent people wanting to overturn a lawfully elected government. The very antithesis of what we claim this country is about. The chaos was dreadful. And the chaos could make us lose hope, turn us to anger, drive us to despair. The original chaos we humans feared is water. In the beginning, darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. In the original Hebrew, darkness covered the face of the tahom, a word meaning ocean, or deep, or abyss, or as Catherine Keller in her work, Face of the Deep, defines it, salt water, chaos, watery chaos, a primal fear, the fear of drowning, of being overwhelmed by chaos. But the Spirit of God hovered over the water at the beginning of God's creation. Chaos and uncertainty have always been part of God's creation. In baptism, water tumbles chaotically over you as it did when Jesus was baptized. Jesus honored this watery, chaotic symbol of God's creation and established it as a sacrament for us. Jesus told us to enter that watery chaos. Jesus told us that the chaotic waters of baptism are a blessing to us. People of Trinity, people of God, this will be a year like no other. A year also filled with chaos. What will happen now? Will violence reoccur? Can we heal? Can justice prevail? And, and most importantly, can we learn from this and change? The temptation this year, and it is a year in which we will emerge from a certain kind of chaos, the temptation as we emerge into a new and different chaos is to seek a secure landing, a familiar landing, to seek a known shore. This is a reasonable temptation. But what we are called to do is to see God's loving action in chaos, to see chaos as the leading edge of a new creation. We are called to be comfortable in chaos. 
We are called to recognize the tahom, the deep, watery chaos as part of creation from the beginning and to be anchored in it and to float in it and to move with it. I wish that I could tell you that right now I have a plan or some kind of clear vision for what we are going to be called to do this year. I am working on it. But I, I do know a few things. We are blessed with so many people, with so many talents and skills. We are blessed by the time and resources of people who work tirelessly to bring justice and peace and compassion and reconciliation and clothes and food and hope to a broken, conflicted, and chaotic world. We are blessed by every ministry here, from the people caring for our building, to the people hanging banners, to the people making sandwiches, to the people teaching children, to the people making worship beautiful, to the people who teach us stewardship, to the people who make this building thunder with music and praise to the God of our salvation. We are blessed with the passion given by the Holy Spirit a spirit that rips open the barrier between heaven and earth, a spirit we all received in baptism. And I do know that these passions and skills that have been given to us will help us to be <laughs> a new and different voice that proclaims the gospel boldly in word and deed, a voice that will announce God's reign, a reign of peace and harmony and dignity for all of God's creation, a voice that will shepherd Bloomington, southern Indiana, the country, and the world into that reign, a voice for ending the violence before it overwhelms us. We will have to embrace some chaos. We will have to try some new things. Some of them will fail. We will have to stretch ourselves personally and as a church. We will have to not fear a bit of chaos, but to welcome it. We will have to be brave enough to swim the watery chaos like a fish. We will have to try and then learn and then try again, but never quit swimming like the fish who live in the waters of chaos and thrive. And we must be anchored like the kelp in our faith and in our confidence that in baptism, God has given us all we need to be fish. And we can sway in the ocean and ride the waves. People of Trinity, people of God, I call on you to embrace the chaos this year. Be the kelp and be the fish. Let us try new things, different things. Let us burst forth like water running rapidly. Join a commission here. Work in your neighborhoods. Listen with calm confidence to the fears and hopes of the world and bring the ideas you have to us and we will try them so we can be the kelp and be the fish. And you will be blessed, and all creation will be blessed. Let us reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has called us out of darkness into the glorious light of the sun. Let us pray for those who do not know the light and for all those in need of our prayers. Holy Father, you seal us by your Holy Spirit in baptism and claim us as your own forever. May our offering of worship be acceptable in your sight. Lead us to your presence. Let us see your glory. Almighty God, grant wisdom to your church. Work through us that we might lead many to the knowledge and love of you. Uphold our bishops, Michael and Jennifer, with the Holy Spirit. Lead us to your presence. Let us see see your your glory. God of peace and light, open the minds and hearts of the leaders of the world that they may seek the light of your wisdom and strive for your peace throughout your creation. Give the people of the nation insight, understanding, and tolerance of one another's views. Lead us to your presence. Let Let us see your glory. God of creation, the heavens reveal your wonders in the universe. Open our eyes to see the wonders. Strengthen our will to protect and care for the gift of creation. Lead us to your presence. Let Let us us see your your glory. Loving God, you are the help of the helpless, the fearful and the lonely. You bring strength and healing to those who are ill, especially Jonathan, John, Melva, Beth, Gloria, Evan, Maggie, Hugh and Cynthia, Melissa, Bill, Jane, Mary, Anne, David and Lisa, Amos and Comfort, Mary, Bill, Katie, Ruth, John, Matt, Susan, Charlotte and Elizabeth, Sarah, Lance and Cheryl, Linda. All those who have been affected by the coronavirus and any others we now name. We give you thanks for all those who have known your healing. Let us see your glory. Lead us in your presence. Let us see your glory. God of grace, we give you thanks for all the blessings that nurture and sustain us. Stir up in your spirit in our hearts Strengthen our resolve to act for those who are oppressed by inadequate work or lack of work and food, by prejudice, lack of shelter, 
education, and hope. Lead us in your presence. Let us see your glory. God of light and life, let light perpetual shine on those who have died, especially Bill and Burl. Comfort the living with hope eternal. Lead us to your presence. Let us see your glory. Loving God, hear the prayers of your faithful people and guide our thoughts and actions so that your will may be done and your name glorified through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, 
You have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in the word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer for spiritual communion. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we give you thanks that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. May God, who by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Please be seated. For a few announcements. Well, thank you for joining with us this morning for our service. Just a few things that I want to mention. Uh, We reached our pledge goal during our stewardship drive. We reached it. Actually, that's worthy of applause. That 
That, that is an incredible, incredible testament to your faith, your commitment to the mission of God, and your commitment to Trinity. And so, I mean, truly, I'm personally deeply moved and grateful. I want to thank our leadership chairs, Tom and Marie, and I want to thank all the people, the stewardship team, and I want to thank you in this time with this chaos and this uncertainty to make a pledge to promise to, to, to promise to contribute financially to the glory of God and the mission of the church is, is truly impressive. And I'm a bit at a loss for words, which is saying a lot. So thank you. Thank you. We are still collecting winter wear. Actually, I've seen that box fill up just about every week. Um, so please, if you have some, bring it on into the office. Uh, we are here nine to five, Monday through Friday, or at least Emma is here. So come on down if you have some winter wear you can donate. And uh, the only other major thing I have is the Bloomington Multi-Faith Alliance Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration will be online today at 4 p.m. And I'll be offering a little reflection as part of that service. And it's, I, it's hard for me to read out the link, HTTP colon slash backslash back. Anyway, you could go on Facebook, search Multi-Faith Alliance, Bloomington Multi-Faith Alliance, and you should find it. Or you could just probably just Google search uh, Bloomington Multi-Faith Alliance Martin Luther King celebration, something like that. There was a link to it put in the e-notes, so you can check that out as well. Are there any other announcements we should be bringing up today? Well then, Deacon Connie, would you dismiss us? Please stand. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.